Welcome to another episode of GCK Daily. In life, there are so many difficult choices, many difficult decisions to consider. There are many complex decisions with numerous options and complex outcomes. And sometimes there's no good decisions that can be made. Sometimes you need to make a choice between a bad option and a terrible option. However, there are times when an option comes to light that very clearly is the best decision, the best choice, the best way to go. Today in GCK Daily, we look at two specific options, the way of lawfulness and the, or the way of lawlessness. And we're not talking about lawfulness or lawlessness in terms of civil law, but rather we're talking about lawfulness and lawlessness in terms of the word and the will of our God. What does God want? What does God command? And most importantly, will I do what God commands? Research has shown that the happiest people are not those with money or fame or power, but rather it is those who have close relationships. And the Lord designed it this way, that when we obey his law, we find true abiding happiness. So let's focus in as Pastor W.F. Kamui, an internationally renowned pastor and teacher, points us to the law of the spirit of life and liberty. I'm taking a story from the Bible, and the story is in Numbers chapter 21. Let me read the story to you. Then I'll make the interpretation, application to you, and the victory they got, you'll get that victory tonight. Numbers 21, reading from verse 4. And they journeyed from the Mount of by the way of the Red Sea, and to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged because of the way. What happened is God delivered the children of Israel, like he will deliver you tonight. And then he was taking them on a journey. And their journey will lead them to the land of promise. We are on a journey in our lives. Everyone is on a journey. From the baby to the toddler and to the infant and to the youth and to the teenager and to young adults and until old age. We're moving on. And every year is like a milestone in our journey. And sometimes, you know, we get discouraged because of the things happening to us on the way in our journey. If you are discouraged tonight, if you have ever been discouraged, you are not alone. Others have been discouraged, but in in their discouragement, you know, when we are discouraged, we could look at the sun in the sky. Or we could look at the dungeon in darkness. They chose to do something wrong and to say something wrong. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, and the people speak against God and against Moses. Wherefore, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There are some people, they are nearer death than life in their language. In their thinking, in their way of life, in their interaction with people, any little thing that happens, they are nearer death in the tongue, in the words of their mouth, than they are to life. And these children of Israel, they were nearer death. They never remembered at that time of discouragement that God was taking them to the land of promise. How about you today? Do you think and talk and feel any little sickness, any little problem, any little challenge, death, death, death? The Lord will make you to see life today. As we listen, we've discovered a few key points. Number one, a failure comes from the absence of Christ. When Christ isn't with us, we don't walk in the Spirit of God, nor the Word of God, nor the grace of God. Rather, we walk in our own sin, sickness, and suffering. We pile upon failure and failure, 
but when Christ comes to us, he gives us grace and the ability to move forward successfully. Number two, discouragement leads to lawlessness and hope leads to lawfulness. If we have no hope, no purpose, nothing to look forward to, nothing to pursue, it causes us to become discouraged. This discouragement can cause us to look at other ways, other options, other paths. We lose sight of the Lord, we lose hope in the Lord. We pursue other paths because we have lost the focus on the treasure, on the reward, and on the result. Number three, the way of the sinner is hard and the way of the righteous is easy. Our sin causes us to suffer. When we follow the ultimate command to love the Lord, we also follow the second command to love others. Our life improves naturally. The Lord has designed it this way. When there's hatred, when there's slander and gossip, when there's rage, these things destroy relationships. People end up alone and hopeless. Now let's finish up our conversation on these two opposing pathways and learn how through a heart transformed by grace, we can walk by the law of the Spirit. And then they said, for there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loathed this light bread. They were saying, economy was down for them. They talked of retrenchment. They said, we have lost even the ability to have good food that we want. They said they were living from hand to mouth, and this bread they got was not very good for them. How about us? What do we say? How do we think? How do we talk about economy? How do we talk about our problems? How do we talk about our joblessness? And now they speak against God. They sinned against God and against Moses. But there is consequence for everything we say or do. Look at verse 6. It says, And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and much people of Israel died. It was then they woke up. Tonight, you will wake up. All the things they brought upon themselves, of the things they said, what brought them into the death they were talking about. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned. That made a turning point in their lives. And tonight, I'm going to give you the chance to have a turning point. I didn't hear you there. Tonight, a turning point in your life in Jesus' name. Now, they saw other people dying. They saw the consequence of what they were seeing. All of a sudden, they said, we must do something. Our situation can change. Your situation tonight will change. So, they said, we have seen. For we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And God answered the prayer of Moses. The Lord will answer my prayer for you tonight in Jesus' name. Whatever pain, whatever sorrow, whatever sickness, whatever suffering you have, as you have come and you desire that we pray for you, tonight God will answer your prayer, my prayer concerning you in Jesus' name. But you know, the people opened up to the prayer. When you open up to the prayer, everything we say in the prayer, miracle will come upon your life. The miracle is already coming from heaven. It will land at your doorstep. It will land on your body. It will land in your soul. I believe my sins are forgiven. Thank you. I believe my soul is saved. Thank you. I believe I'm now in fellowship with the Heavenly Father. 
I'm going to pray with you now. Keep on standing up. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for all your creatures who have now become your children. They have turned away from their sin. They have repented of their sins. And they want your grace and favor and forgiveness and your strength. I pray, do it for them now in Jesus' name. Forgive them. Give them your peace. Give them your salvation. And confirm the joy of salvation in their hearts right now. Lord, give them assurance they have now come into fellowship with the Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your time has come. You raise up your hand for your miracle. Touch the place where you have the challenge. And then after the final amen, you'll open your eyes and check up. You'll find God has made all things possible in your life. Raise up that hand. Expect the miracle. Put your attention on God. With God, all things are possible. Father, we come to you tonight with implicit faith, unshakable faith, unwavering faith, knowing that with you all things are possible. We come for those possibilities of unshakable faith tonight. And we're asking, O oh Lord, perform your miracle in every life. Yeah. Heal the sick. Yeah. Deliver the oppressed. Yeah. Break every yoke. Yeah. Destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. Lord, I pray that what men could not do, and what men cannot do, that at this very moment now, over here, on these grounds, over the radio, over the television, and in every locality, everywhere, all over the world, what men could not have done, do it now in Jesus' name. Let the incurable be cured right now. Issue of blood, dry up in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Tuberculosis, you are healed in Jesus' name. Every yoke, every affliction be taken away from your life and from your body at this moment in Jesus' name. Healing everywhere now. Deliverance everywhere now. Miracle everywhere now. Lord, confirm it in everyone. Testimony in every mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. been walking the same old road for miles and miles if you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside there's a better life there's a better life if you got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. He's got chains, he's a chain breaker. Oh, yeah. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves. We won't run the things we know just ain't right When there's a 
better life, amen. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. God does indeed have a plan for your life, and the rain of laughter and love and joy will flood your life with God's goodness. Thanks for being a part of GCK. Daily we post new videos right here on our regular basis to keep you strengthened in your faith. When you share and subscribe to our channel, it helps you to share this life-saving message across the globe. Please let us know how you have been impacted by our ministry in the comments section below. Keep in touch with us on all our social media platforms, and we look forward to connecting with you as you join us from across the world. At the next Global Crusade, thank, thank you. you.